So you think this is part of G escalating in a way uh, the, the sense of tension that still exists on the border? Shri, Professor Shrikant Kondapalli, Dean of School of International Studies, Professor of China Studies at JNU, do you agree with that? That G is sending out a message that I'm not doing business with India at the moment. I will continue to sort of create this sense of tension at the border and allow that to, to possibly even escalate, according to Brahma Chalani. Uh, I think that the uh, the dispute at the border is at a bilateral level, while the G20 is at a multilateral level. Uh, I think we need to distinguish between these two, bilateral and multilateral. Uh, if you see the BRICS meeting in Johannesburg or other multilateral mm -hmm. uh, attendance by the leaders, they have uh, maintained that uh, decorum uh, in terms of uh, div dividing uh, these as bilateral and multilateral issues. Uh, but I think that uh, Xi Jinping is uh, skipping this meeting primarily for two reasons. One, uh, uh, the Chinese isolation uh, that is quite possible mm -hmm. after President Putin declared on August 28th that he would not be visiting New Delhi for this meeting. Uh, China would have been isolated, uh, Xi Jinping specifically, uh, in the G20 process, because since Bali, it has become two is to 18, uh, two meaning here, China and Russia, versus the rest of the other uh, 18 members of the G20. So this is the worst case scenario for China, uh, which also perhaps will influence Li Qiang's presence when mm -hmm. he comes to uh, attend the G20 meeting. So I think the isolation is, um, is very, very uh, uh, important for in the Chinese foreign policy uh, that needs to be avoided. Uh, and I think that is one. Second, of course, there is uh, the health issues. If mm -hmm. you look at those videos in uh, Johannesburg, uh, uh, Xi Jinping was walking uh, as if he had uh, so many, uh, you know, issues, health issues, and he skipped the BRICS right. uh, business forum meeting. Uh, so it indicates that, uh, and he did not visit many other countries in the last few uh, months after the Moscow visit in March and the Johannesburg visit. So he has been canceling many of the visits. So I think it is one other aspect of that. Right. Um, can I can I just get Aina I, I back on this? Aina Tangen, do you believe that uh, China and Russia are now getting slowly isolated within the G20? Is that how China sees it? The part that the other 18 countries are coming around on critical issues, including Ukraine, and China and Russia are getting isolated. Well, I, I think it's a mistake to say that uh, the G20 is supposed to come together. They're supposed to issue joint communiques on what they can agree on. Uh, you can certainly come up with lots of paranoid ideas about uh, conspiracies, etc. Uh, but the facts are very simple. Uh, India, as the leader, needs to come to to create some sort of joint communiques. So far, uh, in this. G20 cycle, they have not. So this is the last chance. Uh, Modi was uh, and India were counting on showing diplomatic chops, uh, the ability to get people together. And right now, it doesn't seem that way. Mm -hmm. um, remember, the G20 was created to deal with the last financial crisis. Uh, and unfortunately, this time around, it has not been able to do that. And what you've seen is in this kind of vacuum, you've seen the BRICS come forward. Now, at the BRICS meeting, uh, all of the uh, individuals, uh, India included, uh, Russia, China, Brazil, et cetera, uh, were able to agree uh, to add more members. I think there's a tremendous amount of cooperation shown there. So this idea that uh, Xi Jinping is sick or that uh, this is mm -hmm. all some sort of charade, I think, is incorrect. I don't think that uh, China is concerned. Uh, about um, you know uh, its image right now, it's more concerned about the economic realities at home, and they would like to see a world that is more peaceful because uh, they depend on trade. Okay. So they're not interested in the kind of wars that are going on in Ukraine. They're certainly not interested in more uh, conflicts elsewhere, as they've demonstrated by trying to bring countries together in the Middle East. Uh, Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia in particular and in other areas. So I, I think India and China actually have the same ideas, but local politics is getting in the way, especially right. for uh, with the election coming up uh, next year. Final word, one minute to go, uh, uh, Professor Chalani. What's your sense? 
that is the are the Chinese going to block any kind of consensus at G20 and is that really the reason in a way that China wants to send out a message in the way that they have well, there are two issues. One issue goes beyond the New Delhi summit. The G20 faces a crisis because of the growing international divisiveness. Sharpening geopolitical competition is making it difficult for the G20 to help coordinate policy for the global economy. This was on full display at the last summit in Bali, mm -hmm. and the New Delhi summit will also mirror the widening international divisions. But there is also a more fundamental issue. It is the Sino-Indian Rivalry. The Sino Indian rivalry is the impeding efforts to unite the global south. Mm -hmm. It's also going to impede efforts to transform BRICS into a credible alternative to the G20 and the G7. Mm -hmm. And then there is the issue of, of the border confrontation between India and China. Xi Jinping seems caught in a military crisis of his own making. He may want to resolve the crisis, but without losing face. His efforts to compel India to buckle have come a cropper. The only way to end the military standoff is through a deal to implement a sequential process of disengagement, de-escalation, right. and de-induction of rival forces. But no deal is possible without the aggressor willing to settle matters. 